one of my key objectives as the data science lead. We're also kind of looking towards a potential, you know, IPO or public listing at some point in our future, hopefully. And so reliability, trustworthiness, kind of data privacy and data control is like a big part of that. And we've had a few outages related to total membership volume reporting. So basically like a few incidents, uh, data science incidents, I would say, where like mm. the pipelines broke, but we didn't really know about it. We maybe didn't catch it till after we talked about it. And we said, hey, this is what the number is. And turns out two weeks later, that number is like totally wrong. Um, and those are okay to happen if you're like, you know, a startup and you're not public yet. But I kind of knew and felt the pressure of like, these can't continue to happen in the same way. And we need to build some more robust systems. We've introduced a lot of um, new products over the past years, and that really changes your databases and changes the way that your data moves throughout the company. So a key example of this is Patreon. It used to be you can only pay in U.S. currency, and now you can pay in Norwegian kroners and in euros and in Great British pounds and Canadian dollars and Australian dollars. So we're doing some really big migrations to our payments data tables that are like the core tables of the company. This is what goes out to investors. This is what we look at every week. Um, and those migrations were kind of scary. <laughs> and we were adding in columns and changing columns and adding group buys and wanted to make sure that we were not actually changing historical data. And so Datafold came into the mix because we really had this problem of like, we're touching these pretty complex critical data systems that power you know, 80% of reporting at the company and 80% of decision making related to data. And we want to make sure that the data is not changing in a way that is um, introducing issues or lack of trust or whatever else. So really data diff part of data fold was kind of like why we started working um, with data fold and, and purchased the solution is so that we could run these diffs on our, what we call our core cash tables and really understand those like granular changes in the payments data. Um, now, as we worked with Datafold, they've like we've been able to start to solve some of our other um, problems, like having lineage and having catalogs. So there's like a lot more that's that's been opened up to us. I think the initial demo of like diff and seeing the distribution of columns and the difference between like being able to basically take two tables or two queries and look at the differences in a way that's not just like these are different, but in a way that's like, here's how they're different and where they're different. And the, and actually looking at the distribution of like um, values within a column is something, I did the demo with Yassine, who's one of our, uh, really owns all that financial data and you know wrote, wrote those five online queries. And I think that both of our eyes just kind of lit up and we're like, oh, this is the like nerdy solution we were looking for. Like, if you have this problem, this is exactly what you want to see. Like, you want to see that this column distribution shifted 20% in that way, or this column that is never null is suddenly now null. Um, and you want to have the ability to act on that, to go to the engineering team and said, hey, what changed in the underlying database? Um, and to really be able to like plug that across the, your whole data system. Um, and so I think for us, it was like that initial view of like distributions and sort of diffs. You see that holistic view. I told Lev, like, you look at the land graph, and you literally see all the things colored red that you just like fucked up because you changed the table. Um, and that is incredibly powerful, not only as a data leader, because I suddenly have confidence in the whole system and the interdependencies between it. I don't have someone pinging me say, or if someone pings me and says, hey, why is this dashboard out of date? I can actually answer that question in five seconds instead of it taking like 25 minutes of digging through code and digging through pull requests and all that. Um, so it's not only like for me as a data leader, but as a data generator at the company, as an engineer, as a product owner, you understand how the rest of the company makes decisions based on data that your product generates.